say thank you for having us, you know, letting us speak with you. We really appreciate it so much. Um, oh, the film. Thanks, I, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, no problem. I also wanted to start with saying that uh, the film is absolutely gorgeous. I, I don't know how you were able to do what you did, but I guess we're going to find out uh, here momentarily. Uh, how long did it take to animate this, and how many animators did you have? The f- first 16 months, um, it was pre-production, uh, building all the sets, uh, which took quite a bit of time because we were in a, a half-scale lemur world. Um, lemurs are usually about 24 inches high, and our characters were around 12 inches. And um, a lot of storyboarding, and, and um, we needed to put a, a studio together in a, a warehouse in northwest Portland and, and also get our our puppets fabricated and that yeah that took about 16 months and then um production was two years and and then um at the end of post we were we were north of four years to get to the last frame wow wow and um and with regards to animators we had um our our lead animator who uh animated the majority of the shots um her name is Teresa drilling and and then um we had um, we had three other animators as well. So four total. Really cool. Wow, that's a lot um, of uh... Yeah, to be accurate, um, uh, there was more than four animators, but as far as um, animators that uh, took on most of the shots, it was four. Nice. Why lemurs? And just so we're clear, those are lemurs, right, like you said? Correct. Um, well, Originally, Two Balloons uh, was supposed to be a, a live-action film, and when the aircraft hangar we needed to accommodate uh, dirigibles became unavailable, we we suddenly had a a scale problem, and I turned to stop motion as a solution, and also to be able to delve into a medium that I I've always been passionate about, and um when we made that transition from live action to stop motion we also transitioned from actors to to puppets and uh i felt uh, when we got into the uh working with puppets that that i if we had animals it would help us suspend disbelief and i uh, was trying to decide what they should be and i remembered a a passage from a book um the title is The Unquiet Grave by a writer named Cyril Conley, and, and he's just, he wrote this, um, this passage about how lemurs first affected him when he saw him, saw him as a kid, and that he felt they held the secret to life, and um, they lived an existence that was guiltless and without any ugliness, and um, everything was immediate sensation, and I can't do justice. Um, to how well written it is, but um, when I reread it and I set the book down, um, the decision to work with, um, to have our characters be lemurs was made. Wow, that's an amazing answer. And I I just thought you were probably a big fan of lemurs, but that's an even better <laughs> answer than I, I literally thought you could give me. Uh, so, I mean, obviously they're animals. Was there a conscious decision made to make the characters mute or did you not want to anthrop- anthropomorphize them? Well, the the original motivation um, for the film came from music, from a song, and I um, I feel like uh, music's got a, got a way of taking us away from from intellect and and going to a place of intuition and that it's that musing kind of lyrical emotion that can happen to all of us when a song hits us hard and um it i think is almost like a daydream sort of state and those musings that we have are ideas that happen uh they're they're not verbal and and when I first got the idea for the film and the catalyst being the song. I kept listening to the song over and over again and um, started jotting down ideas. And it just, it it felt like um, 
uh, to include any dialogue would um, diminish the initial inspiration and and I I wanted it to be more about the music and, and the sound design and the foley. I think you made a great decision because I, I think that Thank having you. the mute really makes it more a more effectively told story. So I totally would think you made a wonderful decision there. Obviously, this is a it's stop motion. Uh, when you were making it, were there stop motion films that you looked to and said, I kind of want to make something that looks as good as that? Um, actually, um, visually, m m all the inspiration came from the 1930s and, and the 40s, and it was, I mean, literally thousands of reference images in, in folders, and, and the, the look was, was based on, on stills of the, with regards to animation, I'm, um, I'm a fan from of all of it from the very beginning, like O'Brien and and Harryhausen and some of the animation that Tippett um, created in in the first Star Wars and um, everything from Ardman and and um, uh, I yeah I'm mean, definitely there's there's a lot of influences, but from as far as the look, it, it came from stills. Like, was the inspiration. I, did, I did like the look. It had a very steampunk, but not but more not steampunk look to it, you know? Because anytime I see a, yeah. a dirigible or, or a Zeppelin or something like that, I immediately think steampunk. Yeah, I guess there is that association. I'm I during um I love the production design aspect of filmmaking. It's it's my favorite um part of filmmaking and, and uh we I just um, I knew that the characters needed to be in the air, and I there wasn't a conscious decision to take a, um, any reference from from um, a steampunk genre of, of um, but I I can see where that association happens for sure. Yeah, I I wanted to talk about one shot in particular in the short that I I just found breathtaking. It's the shot where one of the lemurs is I think hanging out the side of the the dirigible, and then there's just a moon pretty much up, uh, up center on the, on the camera and you're just looking out on this endless sky. It's just one of the most gorgeous shots uh, in the whole thing. How did you even think yeah. about that? Like, what goes into something that looks that good? Well, um, it's shot 41. Is <laughs> I, I know which one you're talking about. In um, the uh, On this one, we we really wanted to make a film as analog as possible. And I think part of what um, you might be reacting to is, is just the, um, the handmade approach to the, to what you're seeing. Um, all of our, our sets and the ships and, and the puppets and our props, they're, they're all handmade. And that um, same, of ethos or motivation is in the backgrounds as well. Our our matte paintings are hand painted. The the clouds are all made out of out of wool. Our the stars that you see are are pin poked through foam core and they have there's mylar strips of mylar like the emergency blankets um mm -hmm. uh, behind the foam core being agitated by fans um to create that pulsing look of um the stars and um we in the storm sequences we even um uh photographed we we built a tesla coil and then we photographed the lightning from the the tesla coil and and brought that into the film to try to make it make it more real well it looks really really amazing when i saw that um what directors inspire you because obviously you wrote and you directed this thing so when you look at your mm. your sort of influences on how you like to shoot i know you mentioned you're really big in the production design i know there's a lot of directors who take that stuff very seriously being the de you know the detailed natures of that sort of thing so what kind of directors really you know inspire you um well i my elvis is 
is uh, Wong Kar Wai's films, particularly the ones that um, he collaborated with uh, Christopher um, Dolan. And I, um, I, I really love the um, how he's he's able to take a era and almost suspend time and um 2046 and and in the mood for love are are films that i i keep going back to and and learning more and seeing more about production design and and lighting and i um yeah that um those the production design in both of those films um are definitely probably influenced me you know somewhere and in the back of my mind, just from having watched them so much. Well, I, I totally agree with you. A lot of people uh, know this, but uh, In the Move for Love just so happens to be my favorite foreign film of all time. Uh, I totally cool. agree with you. He pretty much, when he makes, when, when Wong Kar Wai makes a film, it's like you're watching a film made under glass in an area where you're never, you're in this time period and you're not, you know, you're not where you're at now. You're in the time period he's putting you in. I think you're right that the production design is part of that. Um, there's a two part. There's a part two to that question, and I always ask it. It's usually a, a good, fun question. Um, if you if you only had to, you know, you're on a desert island and you could only have two movies with you, what two would you take? You, you got to remember <laughs> the only two you're gonna have. Um, it would be them. I am. I would. I would go for for in the mood for love and and for 2046. No question. Those are. You know, you can't go wrong with those two choices. I think they're fantastic. Um, if people wanted to watch Two Balloons, and I think that they should because it's a really beautiful film, uh, where, where would they be able to see it? Is there something coming out where they can see it more widespread? Is it going to be part of more of a shorts program? Um, I uh, right now I'm 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 at um, in New York for for Tribeca, and we're we're screening here. Um, we've screened twice, and then they had an industry screening, so we've got three three more screenings and um uh we're we're also at a couple other festivals right now river run um in north carolina and and uh just finished up at atlanta so i'm on our website the the film festivals are posted and then we um recently were able to get some distribution from um a what media it's o u a t media and they're based out of out of um toronto and and i think they're gonna you know work at being able to get the film on on um platforms we're all familiar with like like amazon and uh um but i i believe it's it's probably three or four months away so the the film festivals would be the best source right now awesome and you know we'll we'll put a link in the review of the short, in as well as the, a copy of the video for this, in, in there as well, so people can check out the website and get to know where festivals are going to be at. And you know, if that distribution does come along, they can check out the the film here. As I, because like I said, I think it's a very breathtaking film. Everything feels large, but it's actually not. It's all small, and, and I thought that was really well done. And that comes down to you just being, admittedly, a very good director. <laughs> very, very oh, well done. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I really oh, appreciate that. You're welcome. I mean, it, it, it was I, I I couldn't believe it when I I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I watched it, and then I watched it and I said, wow, that was that was a surprise. Okay, I enjoyed that. Um, I wanted to just really thank you for taking time out of what is probably a very busy day for you there in, in Tribeca. I know how that can be. Um, to, to to speak with me for even you know ten minutes, I appreciate. it. Yeah, it's crazy here with the um there's so many good films that uh um you want to see but uh you always feel like you you're um it's it's hard. I, I, I kinda wanna just take the the catalog and, and and be able to to catch up with them later. And uh because okay. uh, you can't see them all, but I guess it's a first world problem that there's too many good movies to see. That is a good first world problem to have from my perspective. Too many good movies because oftentimes there's too many bad ones that I have to watch too. So, <laughs> so thank you 
so much, Mark. I appreciate you very much. And if you do ever need anything else, please let us know here. We'd be more than happy to have you on again. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be uh, – the film is called Two Balloons. It's currently screening at Tribeca. If you don't get a chance to make it on Tribeca, this is the website that will be posted on the review above where the video is at. And check this out. Mark, thank you so much, and have a wonderful afternoon, okay? Great. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Bye. <laughs>